Hi, welcome back to Family Art Project's Depth and Distance series. Today we're looking at the power of flowers. We're looking at the magic that flowers bring and how we can infuse this magic in our lives, in bouquets that we give to people that are special to us, and bouquets we give back to the earth to be in reciprocity. Reciprocity means to be in relationship to, to be giving just as much as you're getting. And so today we're going to be thinking about those ideas as we create bouquets, flower arrangements from wild flowers, or flowers we create from upcycled materials. Today for this bouquet, I am collecting flowers to give back to the earth in a bouquet. So you'll see I'm collecting Yero, which have creeping root stalks, which means that these flowers grow wildly and abundantly. At each node, little bump, a new flower grows. So I'm giving back this flower to the earth in her bouquet because I want to thank the earth for all the abundance the earth provides for me. In this bouquet, I have a buttercup wildflower, which has petals fused together. In this bouquet, I'm giving uh, the buttercup because I want to thank the earth for all the ecological processes and cycles that keep us so interconnected. I also have a fern which is special because unlike most plants it reproduces by spores. So the fern has everything it needs to create life within itself. This is my bouquet for the earth as a bouquet as it's in my bouquet for the earth as a promise that I will create joyous and life-giving things that nurture others um, from all the things that I have within me. So if you don't know the names of plants, I recommend that you download the app iNaturalist. And with this app, you can take a picture of the plant, document where the plant is, and learn the plant's name. From here, you can do your own research so that your bouquet is special to what you want to give back to the earth. Have fun and remember that uh, as you pick flowers, you want to be respectful of the earth. We're going to leave a link to Robin Wall Kimmerer's uh, Honorable Harvest Ethics down below. To start off, I want to share images of what I'm ultimately making for my bouquet. Here you can see white, yellow, and purple onion skins, dried leaves, and colored paper, and some paint. So to make my bouquet, I'm doing a few different processes that you'll get to see. The first is making a stencil. Usually you might use paper of some kind to make a stencil, but anything flat and can be cut works. And using leaves is fun because it already has a unique shape I can play with. Also, even though this leaf can no longer grow, I can still find it, I still find it to be a very beautiful object. To honor and celebrate its beauty, I'm using it in a way that I can make art with. I'm using an X-Acto knife also to make my stencil. To cut your stencil, all you need to keep in mind is that you may want to try not to cut outside of the paper to cut your stencil. And now that I have my stencil, I can paint the inside for as many times as the leaf will hold together. One of the fun things about making your own stencil is that you have an additional object so as you can see, after cutting a stencil from the larger leaf, I have a new shape, which is the cutout. My cutout kind of reminds me of a maple leaf in autumn when they change colors and fall off of a tree. So from a different kind of leaf, without initially noticing, I've cut out what kind of looks like another leaf. I'm going to have a little fun here and play with my elements by painting a stem onto the leaf that I cut out and cutting off the stem from that leaf and putting that onto the painted leaf. It's kind of like a, a fun to change depth and layers and that's what we're ultimately trying to build up here, these different layers. From here I'm starting to build the 3D flower shape. In building my flower bouquet I had to consider my materials. I like to think the act of making art uh, using natural materials as a collaborative process between the materials and myself. For example, even though the onion skin that I have, the yellow onion skin is thin and transparent, it's actually quite strong. That strength is keeping the round shape of the skin intact. All of my other natural materials are a bit more delicate or flaky. 
and I see the onion skin as a cradle. So to me, it feels like I should use the onion skin, the yellow onion skin first, then place the other materials inside of it. For you, you may be in a different creative situation and your materials may urge you to build in a different way. You can see how I'm building by just placing natural materials inside of the yellow onion skin. I'm going to skip ahead here so that you can quickly see what's happening after building the layers. What you see are a lot of crumbled purple and white onion skins and a variety of dried leaves. It's held together using liquid glue. I've also done a bit of painting of leaves by the stem. It looks like a flower that has been opened up. And there's a lot of materials laid out on my surface giving this a lot of energy. However, I want it to feel a bit more closed so it resembles more of a flower shape. It's okay that it's open and that things uh, don't work out exactly the way you vision it, which is a bit of the case here. As I build, I'm giving myself permission to make mistakes and find new solutions as I go along. Now I can see though that I'll need more of the yellow onion skin on the outside to round my flower a bit more to get it to high envision. I want to fill the inside a bit more though, so I'll wait towards the end to add the outer yellow onion skin layer. Now, at this point, I'm doing more of what I've already done to fill the space, so I, I want to take this moment to actually share who this bouquet is for. I'm sharing it with my mom who deserves to be celebrated for all that she has done to support me and because the materials that I'm using comes from the earth, except the paint. I want to also dedicate this to the earth. This will be an altarpiece to remind me of growth and my mother who has helped me in my growth. In addition to growth, I'm also thinking about care, the care that I have for my mother, that she has for me, the care that I have for also the earth, and even the care that the earth has shown me by all that it's provided with food um, and well, also elements that I can use for art. One of the processes that I'm using to illustrate care or even think about care is called quilling. So what is quilling? Quilling is the art form of using strips of paper that are rolled, shaped, and glued together to create a decorative design. With it, you can create different patterns and designs that appear three-dimensional. So what you'll do and what I'm doing here is I cut out thin strips of paper, cut out the green paper, and those strips can vary in width, but they usually are about a quarter inch wide. Then you wrap it tightly around something thin and round like a pen or in my case, a paintbrush. So I've started to create leaves with the quilling process, and now I'm creating a pattern to place inside the leaves, as you can see here. You can repeat your shape or pattern as many times as you like and create to create an elaborate design. A quilling actually has an interesting history and it's very interesting when you think about it with bouquets and objects of care. So quilling was actually popularized in the Renaissance, France, Italy, and in 18th century England. And it was a practice or an art practice popular amongst women because it was considered not a taxing activity. However, as time has passed, rather than see it as a non-taxing activity, we've grown to see it as a caring and gentle activity. This form of art making can be engaged by anyone and can even be meditative. Sometimes it can be hard to get into that meditative state. So maybe doing something specific like quilling can help you get into that space. And here we are, as promised, a bouquet using natural materials with some paint. Thanks, Ryan. What a beautiful way to honor your mother. I love the idea of building an altar, a place you can go to honor and remember. For my bouquet, I'm experimenting with different upcycled materials and papers. The first technique is simply by drawing and cutting out a piece piece by piece back together in a paper sculpture. Here, I am creating a poppy. I am offering my mother a poppy in this bouquet because I love the whirls that form from a beautiful, form into a beautiful circle in that poppy. 
And I'd like my mom to know that just like in a poppy circle of flowers, of petals, there are so many things I'd like to continue to do as she does them, just like the petals of a whirling poppy. You'll see what this looks like together in the bouquet at the end when I construct it all together. Next, I am using eggshells to create a flower. This is like a little morning glory. I treasure moments with my mother when I get to visit her where we both wake up early as two sets and we each have our coffee or tea to start the day. So to create this, you'll see that the eggshells are really just doing all the work. All I'm doing is gluing the pieces together because the shards already look like petals. And you can alternate um, between um, in, the, in the way the eggshells go. Next, I am using egg cartons to create a daffodil. Honestly, I'm adding daffodils because the Irish tradition, yellow and orange flowers are used on, Mel are on, uh, on May Day and Beltane to hang on doors to keep harm away. And my mother also loves the poem by E.E. E. Cummings, which says, in times of daffodils who know the goal of living is to grow. You can use an egg carton shape to cut out many different forms. What flower shapes will you come up from an egg carton? And why is that flower special to you? Lastly, I put my, bo my bouquet together using a stick, all taped together. And you'll see that I've also created a calla lily just from printed paper I have. And this is actually a photo I took of an iris that I manipulate into a calla lily. And I love calla lilies because to me the shape looks like an elegant dancer. And I don't know if I would call it elegant, but another favorite activity of my mother and I is to dance together. What activities do you do with your mother? With your grandmother, with your children, the earth, or any mother in your life? Now I need a vase. I've created one by mixing two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and, a half a cup, and one and a half cups of water. I knead the dough, create my sh shape, and put it in the oven until it changes to a yellowish color. My bouquet is done. I've displayed it on my window with some eggs full of dirt because in that dirt are little seeds of pansies, which uh, will grow into new flowers. And maybe when they grow, I'll be able to give them to my mother with her new bouquet. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining. Remember to hashtag depth and distance your beautiful bouquets. Thank you.